Okay, I'd like to uh, call uh, the regular school committee meeting of uh, Wednesday, September 14th to order. Uh, Superintendent, please call the roll. Mr. Bagoli, Mrs. Cahill. Present. Mr. Gatro. Present. Mrs. Hubley. Present. Mrs. Lebo. Present. Mrs. Santoro. Present. Mayor Cook. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. And I refer to the superintendent for memorial. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we want to uh, recognize the following individuals who have uh, recently passed away. All of these individuals are Quincy Public School employees. The first is Rita Fornano, secretary at Atherton Howe for over 20 years. Phil Garufi, history teacher at Atlantic for over 40 years. Dorothy Kreschler, paraprofessional at several elementary schools throughout the district. Eleanor McCauley, school secretary at Central Middle School for 19 years. A personal a friend of mine, certainly, as the school secretary at Central during that time. Al Savisky, guidance counselor at North Quincy High School for over 30 years and Sal Vento, business teacher for 34 years at North Quincy High School. If we could keep these individuals and their families in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. <laughs> Certainly a list um, of people uh, we all remember well, especially Eleanor McCauley, who served as my secretary at Central. and. Uh, up until last year, sent me a card and a little gift on uh, Boss's Day. So uh, <laughs> we'll miss her greatly. Yes. Great people. Thank you, Superintendent. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Okay, we now have uh, approval of the regular minutes, meeting minutes of June 15th on a motion of Mrs. Lebo, seconded by Mrs. Uh, Hubley. We approve. All those in favor or do we need a roll? All in favor is fine. Say again? All in favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, executive session minutes for June 15th on a motion of uh, Ms. Mrs. Hubley, seconded by Mrs. Lebo. We approve. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Special organization meeting, September 7th, on a motion of Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Gutro. We approve. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. In executive session minutes of September 7th, on a motion of Mr. Gutro, seconded by Mrs. Cahill, we approve. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> It's time for our open forum. This is an opportunity for community input regarding QPS community. In this context, uh, we mem a member of the community is a city of Quincy parent, student uh, of a student who attends QPS or an employee of QPS. Non-community persons not permitted to speak at open forum may submit written statements to the committee. And uh, if you are speaking after giving, um, you must give your name in address, each speaker may make a presentation of no more than four minutes to the school committee, and an individual may not exchange their time or yield to others. Do we have anyone for open forum? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item. Superintendent's report. Superintendent. Thank you again, <clears throat> and good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Before I get into my report, I do want to just review uh, the events of yesterday at Quincy High School regarding the uh, bomb threat uh, that we received. And I just want to kind of go through the day with you so you know what uh, the district, in particular the community at Quincy High School and the SLT here and the Quincy Police Department had to uh, deal with yesterday. Uh, yesterday, Tuesday, September 13th at approximately 8 a.m., we received information uh, that the, uh, one of the secretaries at Quincy High School received a call. Uh, threatening that there was a bomb in Quincy High School. At that point, the Quincy police were immediately called uh, and in consultation with the Quincy police and their leadership team, as well as myself and Mrs. Perkins and Principal Ford. 
and Assistant Principal Smith. We decided to, the safe course of action was to evacuate the school so that the uh, bomb uh, uh, personnel uh, at the Quincy Police Station and the Boston Police, who also arrived on scene, could initiate a uh, entire sweep of the building, including lockers, co uh, corridors, classrooms, the gymnasiums, the auditoriums, the Adams Academy, the entire school. Uh, because of the inclement weather, our students were moved into the YMCA building and the Bethany Church. I do want to thank the staff at the YMCA and the Bethany Church for opening our doors, their doors to our students. Uh, when the students were secure, the um, entire building was searched um, by the uh, Quincy police and the Boston police uh, assisting as well. Um, after about uh, two hours, at around 10 o'clock, the building was deemed safe, uh, that there was no indication at all that there were any type of bomb devices within the school. I should also say prior to the um, evacuation, an instant alert was sent out to the parents um, so that they knew what was going on. A very stressful situation, no doubt, but our Quincy police partners and Boston police partners did an excellent job. As I said, classes resumed at 10 a.m. Um, we first brought the students into the uh, auditorium and the gymnasium and, fr and staff as well. And from there, they were returned back to their classes. Uh, unfortunately, at approximately 1.50 p.m., we were made aware by the Quincy police that a local media station, in particular NBC, received a threat that the Quincy police had missed uh, a bomb in Quincy High School and that uh, the bomb would explode in a, approximately one hour. Um, at 2 p.m., the decision was made, uh, as difficult as it was, uh, to um, dismiss the students for the day um, in an abundance of caution for the safety of students and staff. Uh, at that point, when the students were dismissed, the Boston police and, Bo uh, I should say, the Quincy police and the Boston police returned with their canine units and once again did a complete and thorough search of the entire building. Uh, going from room to room, corridor to corridor, lockers, every nook and cranny at Quincy High School. Um, that took approximately five hours and ended at 7 p.m. Uh, last night. Um, I have to make sure, I have plenty of people to thank and I'll do that in a minute. Um, but I do wanna also um, let everyone know that prior to dismissal that an incident alert was sent out to families so the families knew uh, what was going on and why their students were being dismissed early. Um, once the school was deemed safe at 7 p.m. and completely cleared by the police, we sent out a communication via Mr. Ford to the community indicating what had transpired not only for the second time but throughout the entire day. We sent that to our families via student messages system. I do want to make sure that obviously I thank the Quincy Police Department, the Boston Police Department, the superintendent's leadership team who worked with the police in going room to room to make sure that each room was secure and safe for our students and our um, staff. And of course, I wanna thank our staff and students of Quincy High School for making a very stressful period of time calm and orderly. Um, obviously, the, uh, uh, the entire situation was extremely stressful, but with everybody working together and following all the appropriate protocols, we made what could have been a very dangerous, stressful situation into an orderly, calm situation. And I, again, have to thank everyone involved for making that, that happen so successfully. Um, today, we returned normally. There were no threats, fortunately. Uh, the investigation is ongoing as to the origin of these calls. We're hoping that the um, Quincy police, along with our state police partners, Boston police partners, and the FBI, will uh, hunt down the person or persons responsible for making these calls. Um, just so you know, the difference in attendance from, um, you know, the beginning of school to today, we had about a 10% reduction, 10% uh, absentee rate, um, which is a little higher than our normal rate, which is around 7 to 8%. So we did see potentially some impact uh, of this threat. Um, but um, as I said, working with all of our partners, a um, dangerous, stressful situation was handled very orderly and calmly and we were able to verify that the building is safe and continue, continues to be safe 
So obviously we'll handle these situations case by case, uh, working with our uh, law enforcement partners, obviously with the goal of making sure that primarily our students and staff are safe um, when entering all of our buildings, and in this case, Quincy High School. So with that, I'll open the floor to any questions that people may have. Any questions of the committee? Mr. Gattro. What was the origin of the first threat? Was it a phone call? The first uh, threat was a phone call. It came in under an anonymous um, indication on the caller ID, so we could not get a number, although I believe the um, police and the FBI may be able to um, still work with that, and they're continuing today to try and identify that person. The second call came into NBC. They did indicate to us that uh, that call uh, resembled a number that um, other places like Boston Children's Hospital mm -hmm. were getting, similar bomb threats, believe it or not, a children's hospital, but um, it, and the number kind of resembled that number, but we don't have confirmation that it's the same individual or individuals. And the first call went to who? The first call went to a secretary in the dean's office. Secretary in the dean's office. And was there any reports of social media discussion around that? Not the, uh, meaning... Meaning did anybody say, say anything, corroborate it? No, nothing anything? that we know of at the moment. Police haven't found it. No, okay. no. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Cahill? Um, today, did we have some security presence? Yes, thanks to um, Chief Keenan. I was on the phone last night with Chief Keenan, particularly with regard to the information that happened over at Northeastern. Um, a decision was made at 10 o'clock last night, and working with uh, the mayor as well, that we would have an increased police presence at all of our schools today, and he certainly did that. You may have seen that every school in the district had a, a police presence there this morning, just to give extra um, precaution and safety to uh, students and families. So if we do that, you know, last night you made the decision to do that. Do we let parents and families know that we're going to have some extra police presence at the schools to kind of let them feel a little bit more secure yeah, about normally sending we the kids? Did, we, um, we would do that, and um, on, we did not send out an instant alert on that. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, but normally we do yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, and um, so we were wrestling with the idea of sending it out late last night, but again, we didn't want to necessarily panic people with another yeah, message. Yeah, um, so, um, but the decision was to make sure that the police were at all of the buildings, and thanks to Chief Keenan and his leadership team, that was able to be done this morning. I just think if, if we have a situation like that and we decide to send you know, have police presence the next day, it might just make families feel better Absolutely. about sending the kids that maybe maybe we would have had mm -hmm. better attendance today, you yes. know, just those couple of percent of, that students didn't come. But maybe in the future we want to do that sure, so we can that, do that they'll yeah. know. And it, it, you did it, it bring up a good point. Our attendance actually increased, particularly at the high schools, um, after the first hour. So we had some tardies, yep. basically. I think people were waiting to see if there was another threat or not. Mm -hmm. And then they came in a little later, so... Um, but certainly we'll make sure that that communication is sent. It would be helpful. Yeah. Anyone else? <clears throat> well, thank you, <clears throat> Superintendent. I just want to add the comment that, um, you know, it's a very lonely feeling if you're a principal of a building and something like this happens. And I just want to thank everybody because what you do is you make that person feel a little more comfortable that there are other people in this besides yourself. <laughs> Especially thanks to Mr. Dracchio and uh, uh, everyone else who got involved, the staff being orderly during a time like this is so important. So thank you to all of them. I do want to add that um, the students, uh, even if it wasn't a student, we have no idea who it was. But I think students need to know, and I'm sure they will, that this is not a joke. There are too many people that are involved in this, and you're taking them away from their normal uh, their normal business, whether it's a fire department or a police department, but also they have to know that this is a felony offense. This could cost you your future just by thinking it's a joke. And um, again, I want to thank you all for uh, making this an orderly uh, disturbance, and um, hopefully we can move on and find out who did this and, uh, and have it not happen again. Absolutely. So thank you, Superintendent. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're now moving on to uh, um, Item A, staff member recognition, Quincy High School Volleyball Coach Jackie Niosi to the Massachusetts Volleyball Coaches Hall of Fame. Superintendent. Thank you very much. 
Um, Quincy High School Boys and Girls Volleyball Coach Jackie Niosi has been selected to the MAVCA Massachusetts Volleyball Coaches Association Hall of Fame as a member of the induction class of 2022. Jackie is the fourth volleyball coach from the city of Quincy to receive this honor. You'll recognize some of the other names who received this honor in the past, Tom Henderson, uh, Ray Whitehouse, and Jim Rendell. So a very big congratulations to Jackie Niosi on receiving this recognition. Unfortunately, Jackie could not be with us tonight because she is actually coaching tonight. <laughs> um, so, but I just want to make sure that uh, Jackie is congratulated for this great achievement. So thank you all and thank you to Jackie. Item B, Digital Communications and Web Accessibility Specialist. So I'm happy to report that our efforts in identifying a, quote, webmaster um, has been successful. Kelly Powers is a graduate of Union College, comes to the Quincy Public Schools with a wealth of knowledge and skills. Kelly assisted in the management of the Weymouth Public Schools District website, training staff, and providing user support for their educator evaluation system which fortunately for us is the same educator evaluation system here in Quincy, so that will be very helpful. Uh, prior to her time in Weymouth, Kelly was self-employed as a digital communication consultant where she provided email marketing, social media and, media, and digital content production services for small business clients throughout Massachusetts. Kelly also served as the e-communications director of the Appalachian Mountain Club where she managed the club's website and related web applications. She also directed the club's email marketing initiative and work to continually improve the organization's digital presence. As you know, um, we, our goal this year was to hire a webmaster to improve not only the district website, but all of the school individual websites. Kelly is very excited to join us and to take on this challenge and to um, improve our website in all these areas. So we're very hopeful that everyone, our community, our school committee will shortly see great, great improvements in our district website, but also in our school individual websites as well. So we welcome Kelly on board. It was going to be one of my goals. Mm -hmm. It still can be. It yeah. still can be. Okay. We have the tools now. So. Quincy Public Schools Preliminary Enrollment Report, Superintendent. Thank you. As of today, there <coughs> are 9,836 students enrolled in print kindergarten through grades 12 with close to 100 registrations pending at school sites and central registration. Enrollment figures by school and class size information will be shared at the October 12th meeting. Our initial preliminary numbers when we were reviewing them a few weeks ago indicated we would likely top 10,000. Uh, that has not yet happened, but with the 100 registrations pending at central registration, we'll be very, very close, about 60 away from reaching that 10,000 mark. Um, so that is uh, the numbers that we have currently um, for our QPS enrollment. Item D, QPS Summer Program Review. So I'm very happy to report that we had another very, very successful summer program. I want to make sure that I thanked, obviously, all of the SLT, Assistant Superintendent Perkins, Senior Director Madeline Roy, for all of their efforts in putting together this summer program for our students, and of course, thanking this committee and the mayor for funding this great initiative. Again, an initiative that we've done for the past couple of years to help remediate the effects of COVID for all of our students, special education students and general education students. It was a wide variety of programming for our students. We had approximately 2,000 students and 238 staff members. Students participated in academic and enrichment programs that focused on collaboration, hands-on activities, and strengthening academic and social and emotional skills. These summer programs allowed students to build relationships and develop essential skills to help better prepare them for the upcoming school year. And again, I'm very happy that uh, it was so successful and just thank you to all of the staff and of course our students and families who participated and made this program so successful. So thank you all. Item E, QPS Fall Open House Events. Uh, calendar of events are shared with you at your places. Uh, these events are a great opportunity for families to meet classroom teachers, learn about curriculum and academic expectations and become part of the school community. So I would encourage our families to uh, participate in these um, open houses. It really makes uh, for a better way to get connected to your school and to, better, to have better connections with your staff and your principals, um, just to make it a better experience for your students. So please, please make sure you take advantage of these events and our staff and our principals are very excited uh, to greet you at all of our schools. So thank you very much. Okay, item F, Quincy School Community Partnership Update. 
As you know, the mission of the Quincy Public School Community Partnership is to, is to support the academic, social, and vocational success of Quincy Public Schools and its students. To date, over $120,000 in financial support has been received from 22 local partners. These financial contributions support events and initiatives for the Quincy Public Schools and staff throughout the school year. I just want to make sure that I thank all of our business partners who uh, year in and year out work with us and are so very generous uh, to our programming here in Quincy and our students and staff. So thank you to all of our partners. Okay, item G, the uh, Department of Ed, welcome back to school video. I just have two more uh, items under the, um, sorry. the backpack initiative and new professional staff orientation. Uh, the backpack initiative, 3,600 backpacks uh, filled with school supplies were distributed citywide on September 8th. As I had mentioned, our business partners are so generous to us, in particular NAGE, Quincy Credit Union, Cradles to Crayons, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts, Mass Bay Credit Union, and Granite Telecommunications uh, donated all of these 3,600 backpacks and made sure that they were filled with all the necessary supplies. Thanks to all the school committee members who participated in the backpack giveaway to all of our students. Again, these, um, these events are extremely fun. The students were smiling from ear to ear, and they greatly, greatly appreciated all of these backpacks. Of course, thanks to Keith Sagala, who helped manage and uh, facilitate the backpack distribution. And again, uh, it just makes all of our staff and students just joyful with regard to making sure that all of our students are supported uh, throughout the district. So th thank you to all of our partners again for that. And then our new professional staff orientation occurred on August 31st and September 1st for 81 newly appointed professional staff members. Thank you to Mayor Koch, uh, of course, the school committee, Vice Chair Santoro, and other school committee members who participated in the, uh, the uh, teacher orientation program for our new staff. Of course, the superintendent's leadership team hosted a number of workshops reviewing professional and legal expectations, academic programs, student support, inclusive practices, the mentoring program, security, transportation, and the educator evaluation process, just to name a few. Special thanks to Montilio's Bakery, Bayside Financial Equitable Advisors, the Quincy Education Association, the Quincy Credit Union, and others for sponsoring this great event. So thank you all for that. And We'll move on to item G, the Department of Ed's welcome back to school video. Yes, and this is probably uh, one of the more exciting uh, things tonight that I would like to present on. Uh, one of the stars of the event is with us here tonight, Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins. So um, as many of you know, DZ selected Quincy uh, back in June to be the district to participate in the statewide welcome back to school video. Um, it was a full-fledged uh, production, um, including filming and writers and pre-production. And so obviously we're honored that Quincy was featured uh, in that um, Quincy was selected by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to be the face of welcoming all students throughout the state uh, back to school in September. Again, thanks to Superintendent, Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins, parent Trick Lai and her sons Tyler and Marcus Lamb, and parent Amy Alawad and her son Adam Alawad for uh, participating as actors and narrators uh, for the video. And of course, thank you to North Quincy High School Dean uh, Cariana Santos, who also played an acting role in the uh, video. I also want to thank Commissioner David Murphy for set preparation. Um, Mr. Murphy uh, helped us with making sure that all of our grounds were in tip top shape so that the video that was captured and being played throughout movie theaters all across the cable uh, television shows uh, showed Quincy in its best possible light. And of course, um, we're all excited for Quincy and all excited for um, the video that was created for the entire state really to see Quincy and its students going back to school and being an inspiration for other students throughout the state and their return to school. So with that, we have the video for you to watch tonight, if you wouldn't mind, Michaela, thank you. It happens all over Massachusetts. Can you tie my shoes? In every home. Be careful on your bike. And every community. Learning can happen anytime. We'll see you at practice this weekend. Anywhere. We're there as your partner. In this church, the, teams the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. 
Never stop learning. Let's go back to that church. Find out more at mass.gov slash back to school. Great job, Mrs. Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with that, you. that ends my superintendent's report. Thank you, superintendent. <laughs> now item uh, four, old business. The naming of the North Quincy High School band room in honor of uh, Richard Keneally. If this is up for a vote, I'll take a motion. On a motion of Mr. Gutro, seconded by Mrs. Lebo, we approve the uh, naming of the band room at North for a great person, Mr. Keneally. Superintendent. Mr. Bagoli. Mrs. Cahill. Yes. Mr. Gatro. Yes. Mrs. Hubley. Yes. Mrs. Lebo. Yes. Mrs. Santoro. Yes. And Mayor Cook. Thank you. Thank you. A great man, and uh, I'm sure his family is very much appreciative. New business. I apologize to Mr. Murphy and Mr. Scott, but we have to take item C out of order and move it up to the top, and I'll take a motion to do that. On the motion of Mrs. Lebo, seconded by Mr. Gatro, we move item C to the top of new business. Thank you, Mr. Santoro. We have a, a number of nurses um, to be <clears throat> approved tonight. Uh, the resumes are before you. All of the nurses are uh, highly qualified and licensed through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I will um, name each nurse individually, and we have to do a roll call vote on each okay. one. And if we could start with um, a motion to approve the appointment of Mary Cross as the Snug Harbor Community School nurse. On the motion. Motion of Mrs. Lebo. On the motion. Yes. Um, did you say they're all licensed as nurse school Yes, nurses? they all are licensed, yes. Okay. Because I, one of them I see doesn't have a bachelor's degree. And can you get licensed as a school nurse without a bachelor's degree? Every... Is one Every who nurse is, is licensed. Is yeah. one who is um, enrolled in a bachelor's program but doesn't have it yet. She got an emergency license. Okay. They are all licensed, yes. On the motion of Mrs. Lebo, seconded by Mrs. Uh, Hubley, we approve. Superintendent? Uh, for the first candidate, first Ma candidate, Mary Cross, the Snug Harbor Community School nurse. Um, roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bagoli? Mrs. Cahill? Yes. Mr. Gatro? Yes. Mrs. Hubley? Yes. Mrs. Lebo? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. And May Coke. Next candidate is Tess Doyle, Lincoln Hancock Community School, school nurse. On a motion, Mrs. Hubley, seconded by Mrs. Lebo, we approve. Superintendent? Mr. Bagoli, Mrs. Cahill? Yes. Mr. Gatro? Yes. Mrs. Hubley? Yes. Mrs. Lebo? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. And May Coke. Next candidate is Jennifer Golden, Atlantic Middle School, school nurse. On a motion of Mr. Gatro, seconded by Mrs. Cahill, we approve. Superintendent. Mr. Bergoli, Mrs. Cahill. Yes. Mr. Gatro. Yes. Mrs. Hubley. Yes. Mrs. Lebo. Yes. Mrs. Santoro. Yes. May Coke. Next candidate is Sarah Hill, school nurse for the Southwest Middle School. On a motion of Mrs. Cahill, seconded by Mr. Gatro, we approve. Superintendent. Mr. Bergoli, Mrs. Cahill. Yes. Mr. Gatro. Yes. Mrs. Hubley. Yes. Mrs. Lebo. Yes. Mrs. Santoro. Yes. May Coke. Next candidate is Carol Ann DeLuca Killinger, North Quincy High School school nurse. On a motion of Mrs. Lebo, seconded by Mrs. Hubley, we approve. Superintendent. Mr. Bergoli, Mrs. Cahill. Yes. Mr. Gatro. Yes. Mrs. Hubley. Yes. Mrs. Lebo. Yes. Mrs. Santoro. Yes. Mayor Coke. And last is Kaylin O'Dwyer, uh, nurse at the Central Middle School. On a motion of Mrs. Hubley, seconded by Mrs. Lebo, we approve. Superintendent. Mr. Bagoli, Mrs. Cahill? Yes. Mr. Gatro? Yes. Mrs. Hubley? Yes. Mrs. Lebo? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. And Mayako. Thank you all. Congratulations to all. Did I just say something? Mr. Yes, Santoro? Mrs. Lebo. Yeah, I just want to say that how important this is and how difficult it is to find school mm -hmm. nurses. And these people bring a wealth of, of experience to us. So I'm very grateful for the work that's been done to get them in, into our district because I know every place is having a hard time finding school nurses. So I truly appreciate the work of our new director of health services and her team in getting these people on board. Uh, so I just, I wanted to say thank you about that. And I wanted to make sure that some of these people who've never been in the school will be supported because they're the only nurse in the school. And I know that you'll do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item A, Department of Natural Resource update. Commissioner Murphy. The floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we need the mic. Oh, you got to go behind you. Yeah. You need just move the mic. 
Yeah, just pull the mic over here. <coughs> there you go. Is that okay? Perfect. Thank you. Members of the school committee, Mr. Superintendent, my pleasure to be here again tonight before you. I promise to be uh, brief uh, and go over a few of the important projects that we have that are, uh, directly impact uh, the Quincy Public Schools uh, and our students. Uh, we're very excited to begin another fall sports season. Uh, the uh, soccer teams, our football teams, are off to great starts. Uh, very happy to see the uh, golf team playing up at the city-owned Furnace Brook Golf Course this fall. Uh, we had a very successful season with the combined girls program up there in the spring. They have a consistent home, I think, for the first time uh, in a number of years where they're not being bounced around. And we're very uh, happy to be uh, partnering with Coach Salvucci and Coach Doyle uh, to make sure that our student athletes have a consistent and great place to play. If you haven't been up Furnace Brook, I strongly encourage you to do so. Um, I'm obviously biased, but it's in fantastic shape. It's extremely affordable and accessible. And for those of you that uh, haven't picked up golf yet and are a little reluctant to do so, we do have a series of beginner clinics in September. We will break you in slowly, and then once you're done, go up to the clubhouse, have a drink, and have a wonderful Friday evening. So uh, <laughs> it's a true community asset. We're very happy um, to have this in our inventory, and I'm, I'm very glad that we've struck an immediate partnership with many of our student athletes and our high school sports teams. Uh, I do want to uh, publicly thank J.J. Niamke. Uh, we worked very closely with him in his time as, as athletic director at North Quincy. Uh, very excited uh, to continue to work with Kevin Mahoney, who is a consummate professional, uh, is an excellent athletic director, and we work on an almost daily basis making sure that the uh, field and facility needs uh, of the student athletes in Quincy are met. Um, and uh, I look forward to working uh, with Kevin. I do want to publicly thank the staff of the Quincy Public Schools, uh, Mrs. Perkins and her team. Uh, this summer, our recreation division um, uh, started an incremental uh, inclusion services within some of our recreation programs. Uh, we've had the nationally recognized award-winning Happy Acres program for many years. We're starting to uh, grow off of that and add some inclusion uh, services in our other summer recreation programs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Hanley has done an excellent job in growing that, and that has come with the uh, support of the folks at Quincy Public Schools, and I did want to uh, thank uh, your staff publicly for the support that they've given us throughout the summer months. Uh, on the project front, uh, we've got quite a wide range of projects still going on, but I'll narrow it to ones that I think that are uh, relevant to tonight's discussion. Uh, a couple of projects in Marymount Park that you've seen. We've started the long-awaited, much-discussed construction on Marymount Parkway. Uh, obviously adjacent to Central Middle School. Uh, we have uh, spoken with Principal Richter Christopher on a number of occasions about the potential impacts as we repave the road and do the sidewalks. As you know, some of the students make their way from Marymount up Marymount Parkway to Central. Uh, we have worked with the police department to make sure that there will be a police detail on duty if there is some sidewalk access issues to make sure that at um, any given time there will be one, at least one accessible sidewalk to get to and from Central uh, without issue. So. Uh, that project will um, uh, have a pretty substantial impact this uh, late fall into early winter and then finish up uh, in the spring prior to graduation. We've told the contractors that when uh, Quincy and North graduate uh, next June, this project will be buttoned up with a, a ribbon on it or the mayor will, 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 will let me know about it. So uh, we'll be done uh, by June, uh, beginning of June of next year. Uh, same location, you may have seen the, uh, the renovation of the wall at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Uh, long overdue, it's a project being funded with help from the Community Preservation Committee. Um, the wall built in approximately 1937 with WPA funds uh, needed a tremendous amount of work. This is uh, viewed as our first phase and not the final phase uh, of work at the stadium. Uh, as we begin to make a series of improvements at the stadium, many of them funded privately from um, the originally Boston Cannons and now the New England Free Jacks, as you do one part of your house over, you notice the part that hasn't been done over and you keep uh, looking for ways to continue to upgrade that facility. So the next phase will be completing renovations to the wall. And we also have the uh, concrete bridge that runs from the back of the home stands to the Hancock Street entrance that will be part of our second phase uh, into 2023. But that project is going extremely well uh, and the first phase should wrap up uh, this fall. Uh, similar uh, location. Uh, we've had some discussions with the community around the return of the Lloyd Lilly statues of um, Abigail and John Quincy and John Adams that used to sit out in front of uh, City Hall prior to the construction of the Hancock Adams Common. 
Uh, those will be rededicated on September 26th across from Central Middle School. We've discussed it with um, Principal De Cristofaro, and we're going to be holding the rededication of those statues during the day uh, in an effort to incorporate uh, as many students as possible. Obviously, September is a crazy month, uh, but to the extent that uh, we can um, uh, work with the school in the rededication to uh, emphasize the importance of those figures in our local history, um, we're going to do that with Principal De Cristofaro. Um, finally, I do want to mention um, probably the biggest project that we've worked on this summer and I would suggest probably the most needed project that I've worked on in my time uh, back here in Quincy is at the Point Webster Middle School. Uh, for those of you, which is all the people in the school community, but the people in the public that weren't familiar with it, the uh, area around the school is almost entirely asphalt and it had a uh, six-foot gradient uh, where that uh, served as a kickball field for the students at the middle school. Um, there's been discussions, I'm sure, for quite a few years about doing some substantial improvements down there. And through the help of uh, our house speaker, uh, former school committee member, uh, Ron Mariano, he secured a sizable uh, state uh, appropriation to help um, renovate the Point Webster School Playground. In addition to that, we worked with the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development to get a CDBG grant, a Community Development Block Grant, uh, to fund the remainder uh, of that uh, project. The mayor came to us in um, May and suggested that this project had to get done. And when I asked him what the time frame was, he said the uh, start of the school year. And I had a pretty good chuckle. I said, no, really, when do you want it done by? And he said, no, really, the start of the school year. <laughs> so we were very fortunate to have two Quincy businesses uh, as our partners on this project that uh, I would compare the work and the time frame that they did on this project to the moon landing. Uh, Quincy, um, Granite City Partners uh, and Joe Shea Jr. and Fleming Brothers uh, out of South Quincy were our two partners on this project and they dedicated the necessary resources to make this happen in the time frame that the mayor expected to it. And on the first day of school when those students returned to Point Webster, um, the shock on their faces when they saw uh, really the uh, the asphalt uh, turned into a uh, tremendous turf field. I have some before and after photos I'll show. Uh, was really worth the uh, level of effort that went into this and then some. It was um, one of the more gratifying projects that I've ever worked on to see it go from what it was uh, to what it is. I do also want to thank uh, a few other folks, uh, including um, the Public Buildings Department, uh, my staff at Natural Resources, um, obviously, the principal, Christine Barrett, uh, she had to make um, do this summer with uh, a lot of noise and dust and such uh, outside the building. Uh, and obviously, the entire uh, school leadership team with Superintendent Mulvey and his uh, folks as well, too. This was a, an incredible partnership that um, moved a small mountain and, and turned it into an asphalt field. So I'll just close with some uh, before and after pictures, just so folks that aren't familiar with the uh, location understand um, exactly what happened. So this is the the playground, if you will. Uh, it's difficult in this picture to see uh, because of the way the picture is stretched that that's a six foot grade difference from the center of that playground to where the picture was taken from. So imagine you come off the school, you go up and then you go down six feet. And that was the outfield, if you will, uh, of the uh, kickball field. You can see the work that started the summer with Fleming Brothers. They, you know, every available machine, every available body that they had worked on this for two straight months. And that led to uh, this on opening day uh, of school. So the transformation, um, I think, is uh, only comparable to what happened in Quincy Center with the Common. Um, it really turned a, uh, an area in desperate need of attention and improvement into an area that I think we as a community can be extremely proud of. So uh, I just want to thank all of those involved, from the House Speaker to the Mayor to the Superintendent to the principal, to uh, Grand City Partners, Fleming Brothers, um, the community development um, folks at our planning department, uh, and my staff as well. So uh, that's my report uh, for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any comments, questions from the committee? Just, just want to, Mrs. Lebo. I had a chance to drive by. I, I bumped into Ms. Barrett, and I had a chance to drive by and look at it when it was almost complete. And it was amazing to see the yeah. difference. It really was amazing to see the difference. I know we've been talking about this a lot, Yes. at school committee meetings, especially on the school improvement plans. Uh, so I'm thrilled that it got done. And it, uh, to get done that quickly is amazing. It does look beautiful. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Gutter. What was the uh, design based on? Was it whether it was their input and all of that? I mean, was this something that was sitting for a while and it was a matter of money? Uh, it was a matter of money and it was a matter of uh, 
audacity, I think, to really come in there and, and say, we're going to go from where we are to the, the top. Um, you know, instead of doing a grassed area, I think there were a lot of different discussions about taking some incremental steps. And then when the speaker got involved and said, we want to put a turf field, and I, th I think some of the inspiration may have been the work done at Southwest and how popular that area is at the, the low end of Southwest to have that uh, astro, uh, I'm sorry, turf field, uh, field on the bottom. The size of the uh, field was based on two things, uh, an approximate size of the kickball field and also the need to maintain access uh, on the back side of the school and on the drop-off side so staff and students come in on that side. So we would have liked to do something even bigger, uh, but I think based on the logistics of the school, we are still constrained by the footprint uh, of the size of the, of the property. Were you there when first day of school did you go by I wasn't there in the morning when the kids came up but I went by later on and saw the kids playing in the yard it was pretty cool great great superintendent no go ahead okay I just want to thank Commissioner Murphy um, not only do we have these special projects that are going on here at Point Webster Middle School and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second but just the day in and day out responsiveness and the cleanliness uh, of our schools and the cutting of the grass and the weed, and the weed whacking and all of that. So we just uh, want to thank you uh, because we pick up the phone and it's done the next day. The film production uh, event was just one example of that. I think you did a turnaround within 24 hours of getting, uh, you know, overgrown areas taken care of uh, throughout the district. So that's just one example. But day in and day out, the responsiveness is excellent and you keep our schools looking great so thank you for that with the point webster grounds i can tell you that christine barrett was smiling from ear to ear on the first day of school mm -hmm. and all of her kids were smiling from ear to ear i do want to thank the parents too that were involved in that i remember that during the COVID period we had a number of remote meetings um, and of course the parents were very anxious with regard to getting this area done and, and um, beautified for their uh, students and for the community and you've certainly done that so um, thank you from myself and the SLT for everything you do for the Quincy Public Schools. My pleasure. Thank you. I just want to add um, thank you to Mrs. Pritios for taking a leadership role and making this happen as well. I, um, I also uh, want to remind the committee there was a time when we had to pay within our own budget these things, as well as uh, we're about to hear from Mr. Scott and the maintenance in the, uh, within our buildings. That used to come out of our school committee budget. And... Um, I think it was one of the best moves uh, the city ever did was changing over so that um, the city now helps out because those things never got done. So um, thank you. Uh, we appreciate it and uh, so do our students. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to item B, Public Buildings Department Update. Commissioner Hines could not be here this evening. With us this evening is Dave, uh, Dave Scott. Mr. Scott. Good evening. Good evening and thank you for having the Public Buildings Department here before you to discuss our efforts in the school buildings over the past year. Commissioner Hines could not be here tonight, so I'll do my best to fill in. I believe you have been provided with a copy of the memo from Mr. Hines, which identifies the specific repairs or upgrades performed in each school building. As you can see, it's been a busy year. I'd like to highlight some of the more significant undertakings included in the report. Across all schools, by utilizing both the Mass DEP School Water Improvement Grant of $195,000 and substantial funding from the Department of Public Buildings, we have completed the installation of 65 filtered water combination bubbler and bottle fill stations. All school drinking water facilities are in compliance with the state and federal school drinking water lead regulations. At the direction of the Mayor Koch, we continue to work to achieve lead levels that are a fraction of the allowed concentration. This effort has required the replacement of building water services, distribution pipes, branch lines, and faucets. We have been successful 
as we are getting readings of no detection in many of the water sources that have previously exceeded our goal. The renovation and construction of 180 Old Colony Avenue into the Richard to Christopher Learning Center is well underway and going forward despite the setbacks of a renovation project and the worldwide supply chain challenges. We have an outstanding team leading this project, which has kept up moving forward. No doubt with a lesser team, this project would be bogged down. The Squantum School Building replacement efforts continue to move forward, working with the staff of the MSBA. Documents and submission are timely and complete. At this point, we are in the project team development phase. And as part of that, we have requests for services out to bid now for owners, project manager. We are grateful to the MSBA staff for their guidance and counsel. There are, there are several um, areas that um, we've focused in that, you know, in an effort to try to um, bucket these areas. Um, one area is asbestos remediation. So we have continued the asbestos remediation efforts in several buildings. In Bernazani, we removed floor tile in three classrooms, storage room, entire administration office, nurses area. Um, we are happy to report there are no remaining asbestos floor tiles in this building. In Montclair, we removed floor tile in three classrooms, pipe insulation in the area of the stage, and small instructional spaces. In Wollaston, we removed floor tile in the nurse's office, bathroom, school office and bathroom, and principal's office bathroom, and pipe insulation in various classrooms. We are happy to report there is no known asbestos remaining in this building. So this has been a long process, but it's nice to see. Uh, new floor covering was installed in all remediate, remediated spaces, so that was a combination of um, uh, vinyl tile and hardwood flooring. We have made various repairs and upgrades to building exteriors along with site improvements. At the Early Childhood Center, we located and remediated a problem in an exterior wall that allowed, had allowed rainwater into a classroom space in the former Ward 4 space. At Central, the relocation expansion of the parking lot adjacent to the Learning Center was completed prior to school opening. We've made many lighting improvements. Some of the larger projects include, at Parker School, we did an LED retrofit of the entire building, utilizing Green Communities funding. At North Quincy, we did an LED retrofit in the gymnasium, the art wing, and many of the hallway areas. We've made improvements in the building accessibility and ADA improvements. At Snug Harbor, we completed phase one of a project by installing a new wheelchair ramp and modifying curbing. We completed plans and specifications for phase two, which includes an elevator. At Broad Meadows, we have materials on site to construct a new ADA compliant bathroom near the gym. And at North Quincy, installation of acoustically rated ceiling tiles and sound panels were installed in many rooms to reduce ambient noise. We have implemented many HVAC improvements, including at Marshall, where we are performing a boiler room renovation, including two new high efficiency boilers and the associated boiler room components. This project is nearing completion. At Snug Harbor, we replaced a boiler mid winter last season and the replacement of the associated condensate tank is underway. At Atherton Howe, we designed and installed new ventilation systems serving the office areas and the food prep space. At Lincoln, we designed and installed an improved pool water heating system and an air movement system for the natatorium space to improve comfort and temperature levels. And both at Point Webster and North Quincy High School, we have secured funding for uh, boiler plant replacements.
We have also made many interior improvements to our buildings, such as at Quincy High School, we constructed two new offices in the guidance department. At Squanum, we constructed a new classroom space in the media center. At Lincoln Hancock, we renovated an existing classroom into a new teacher's lounge. At Montclair, we installed new hardwood flooring and painted three classrooms, installed a new ceiling in the, in the first floor hallway. At Atherton, we completed the rebuild of the four student bathrooms. At Broadmeadows, the complete uh, reconstruction and renovation of the auditorium is nearing completion. And ongoing renovation efforts in the gym storage areas, locker rooms, and public bathrooms are occurring now. At North Quincy High School, we have had significant, um, we have made significant renovations to three classrooms, extensive painting and replacing of floor covering in areas throughout the building. So there are several projects that are in the planning process and they include at the Early Childhood Center, we have a design for a replacement of the HVAC system. At Snug Harbor, we have advanced exterior masonry repairs and pointing plans and specifications to the 100% status. At Wallison, we've advanced plans and specs for 100% status for the uh, gym and lower roof replacements and in addition to accommodate the food service operation. We also met with the MSBA staff as part of the accelerated repair program application process. The application is for the boiler room replacement at Parker and the roof replacements at Wollaston and Broadmeadows. There are numerous miscellaneous projects that have been completed. Uh, Massachusetts state code elevator upgrades have been performed in each affected location and numerous rooms have been re uh, repainted and many spaces have received new flooring. So, you know, these are the highlights, I'd say, um, from the document that the memo document that Paul put together and be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions? Mr. Guttrow. Yep. So I have a, uh, first of all, thank you for coming again, Dave, and, and thank you for pinch hitting for Paul uh, today. I have a series of questions that you can bring back and hopefully some you can answer. So uh, this body annually sits with the principals. We go over the school improvement plans and the school improvement plans, they have a whole variety of different aspirations that the principals want to see over the course of the next 12 months included in that are building improvements. Mm -hmm. um, the sequence of that is such so when we get to the budget, we can talk through whether or not there's money in the budget to deal with some of the building improvements. So one of the things that would be extremely helpful subsequent to this is, is a breakdown that does an overlay. This is what was in the school improvement plan. This is what was in the budget. This is what is in progress. This is what is completed. This was outside of the budget because of emergency repairs or whatever the case may be that we had to do or extenuating circumstances, or this was just another project that we had additional money to get done and, and the timing and the sequence or whatever was right. So it would be incredibly useful for us to see that, to know that these are the, these are the issues in each school that we six months earlier had already talked through, looked through. So when you walk through all of those, short of me having every school improvement plan in front of me, I'm, I'm not sure how everything that you've just updated with us aligns with it. So if we could subsequently get that chart, maybe put that in committee and have a subsequent discussion about that, I think that would be incredibly helpful. Is that reasonable? That makes sense. I'll bring it back to Paul. Um, and then a couple of other questions. So the... Um, you did not mention the uh, the rug at Point Webster in the library. Is that, have you seen that? Um, I have not. Okay. Put that on the list, check that out. Okay. My understanding is that's supposed to be replaced. And then uh, the last thing that I want to talk about 
and I didn't hear you do a deep dive on it, was air conditioning. And that's one of the things that I asked that we have a, a deep discussion about air conditioning, including which buildings have it, which buildings don't, mm -hmm. where, if we have it, is it operational? Um, you know, as, as the climate gets hotter and hotter, it, it gets much more difficult for teachers to, to deal with right. some of these shoulder seasons uh, or even summer school. And, mm -hmm. and some of the most high stakes testing that we do is SAT testing that happens in August. And it's just unbearable to, for, to have students and teachers in a building that doesn't have air conditioning. Right. So I think it's something that we, we as a body, that we as a school system need to think about um, because, you know, there are more and more days is probably evidenced by the electric bills that you're paying, you know, um, and, 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 and a lot of the issues. But it gets uncomfortable on the shoulder. It, you know, it used to just be a couple of weeks, perhaps, 30 years ago, but now it's, it's much more stifling to deal with it. So mm. can, you, can you walk us through briefly a little bit about air conditioning, where it exists, where it doesn't exist, um, school-wide, or if it's isolated, why it's isolated, and, and what, if any, plans that we have to put it in some of the schools, especially the, the larger ones that have summer activities or on the shoulders? So the older schools have no air conditioning, essentially. You know, there might be um, select areas that have air conditioning, um, uh, office space, say, that gets used um, all summer. Um, so those are our older buildings, buildings like um, Wollaston, Atherton Howe, Snug Harbor, um, Montclair, you, you know, all of those buildings. How do they stay cool? It's, they don't. Open, it's open windows. Yeah. Right. So that's the existing fleet. Um, you know, historically, every time there's a renovation, air conditioning is added. What about Central, Southwest, Quincy High? So those buildings are air conditioned to a, a tempered level, that we call it. So it's essentially, um, we utilize the um, energy recovery system um, to help with that load. But we're essentially in these new buildings bringing in so much outdoor air that we then um, run it by a cooling coil and condition it on the way in. So the difference between tempered and full air conditioning, say in a uh, type A office space would be that um, you would have the same temperature air delivered, but the volume flow rate would be less in a tempered building than in a fully air conditioned building. Does so, anybody ground truth it to just see how unbearable it is for the teachers and the students? And then, and if you do, then what can we do better? Yeah, so our buildings are our newer buildings that are tempered. Uh, there are areas with full air conditioning within those buildings, such as the auditorium. But not the uh, classrooms. The classrooms are all tempered in the new buildings. So it's, it's very bearable. Um, it knocks down the humidity level and it knocks down the, the space temperature um, considerably. Um, buildings that are tempered versus buildings that have no mechanical air conditioning of any kind. So you're saying that the complaints that that we might get are not valid? Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying we certainly we've had uh, hiccups with equipment not operating for for some reason or another mm -hmm. that will cause hot pockets. But uh, when everything is working properly, it's comfortable. In which buildings? Uh, that would be Southwest. That would be Central. Um, buildings that are fully air conditioned are um, Clifford Marshall, um, Point Webster, uh, North, the high school. North Quincy High School. What, what about Quincy? Quincy High School is not fully air conditioned. It's not tempered either. It's not. It's not either. No. Nope. How do we remedy that? Uh, with a lot of money. You, if you I could make a comment, Mr. Cutro, if you don't mind. In the design of Quincy High School, we were faced with square footage cost. Mm -hmm. 
for more air conditioning to be put into that building would have required us to do away with vocational programs because it was all based on square footage. We removed one, which was auto body, because of the, the requirements of vocational programs, and Mrs. Lebo can assist me, require so much square footage mm -hmm. for the shop as well as a classroom. We could have added more air conditioning to Quincy High School, but we, sh we would have had to eliminate some of the vocational programs. Just because of the Because cost. of the cost per square footage. Uh, Just to so throw that, that in the conversation. And, and so um, cost was not an issue at the other schools that have air conditioning? Um, I can't answer that. That's a, probably an MSBA funding level <clears throat> question. That's a shame. That seems short-sighted, right? That that that. And 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 North Quincy is, is not a problem. Uh, no, North right. Quincy's air conditioned. But Quincy is not. Quincy is not. There are there are areas of Quincy that are. So uh, the office and guidance is air conditioned. The. Um, the dean's area, the entire library is air conditioned. You know what it costs to, to add air conditioning to Southwest, say? Um, so Southwest is tempered air throughout. So it's, it's the current level of air conditioning that all school buildings are built to. So that's not air conditioning is what you're saying? No, it's it's tempered air. It's so do, conditioned the, air. Again, I'm sorry. I thought you said central, southwest, and north. We have air conditioning. Where do we have air conditioning? Uh, central and southwest are tempered air. Th so that's we just, have that's just regular air. That you open the windows and it's no. no, no. That's well, I've never heard that's tempered air, air. It's air conditioned uh, air. It's a it's a term that's used yeah, I don't know. because it's not air conditioned. What is it? Um, it's mechanically cooled air down to air conditioning temperatures, we'll say 55 degrees, but the volume flow rate is less than that of a fully air conditioned building. So if this space required 2,000 cubic feet per minute of 55 degree air to be fully air conditioned, a, uh, a space in a tempered building might have 1,000 CFM. Mm. So in an air conditioned building, you can essentially achieve whatever temperature you want. You can achieve 67 degrees if you want. That's not recommended by the EPA, but you could do that. In a tempered building, you cannot. A tempered building will, will level out at a temperature that's um, you know, in the 74 to 76 range. But on a, on so a Quincy High rate. is not a tempered building either. It just has isolated rooms that might get air conditioned. Right. There's also a, a so Quincy has areas that are fully air conditioned, and then areas that are not. So, for instance, um, some of the labs in the A wing are air conditioned, computer labs. Um, you know the the auditorium, the front office, the library, the deans, the guidance. Those are air conditioned. And then other areas such as um, the computer lab and other focused areas that have internal heat generation that require mechanical cooling to, to overcome the high temperatures that you'd see without it. So short of new construction, like Squantum, right? Is that something we're going to have to contemplate for new Squantum? So I would assume Squantum would be a tempered air building. Um, we'll have the additional challenge there of, of um, working towards a, a net zero building. So the danger with going with fully air conditioned buildings is um, they're more expensive. The, the cost to maintain is significantly more expensive and the cost to operate is significantly more expensive and because school buildings require high levels of outdoor air. Mm -hmm. That's uh, tempering outdoor air or conditioning outdoor air is the most costly part of conditioning a building. Maintaining a building if it was tight with no outdoor air is, is a much smaller load. But with schools, we bring in so much outdoor air for ventilation that the costs to cool that air. So you could imagine when it's 95 outside, 
you're bringing in large quantities of 95 degree air that you have to then condition down to 55 degrees. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's worth the discussion. You know, if you mm -hmm. go into a big office building, if you're, if you're thinking about employee productivity, health productivity, student achievement, you know, if we're thinking about student achievement, employee productivity, it's a discussion that needs to be had mm -hmm. moving forward. You know, it might cost more, it might be energy, but, you know, I'm sure if, if you go to any office park, they don't question whether or not they put in air conditioning, Right. you know, certain times. But right. I think it's a discussion that needs to be had. So, um, so for the, the schools that don't have air conditioning, is there any, any strategy plan consideration moving forward to bring some comfort to those buildings? Well, I can just say in general, when we renovate a building, we add uh, air conditioning or a temperate air system. So Point, Wem Point Webster is an example of that, that went through a renovation and received air conditioning at that time. Um, Parker, when it had a partial renovation, it received air conditioning in some of the um, uh, ground floor rooms. So this is, when you say, um, is it at the time that it's triggered, and I know I'm asking a lot of questions, is it, is it at the time where MSBA gets involved and we have to petition them and there's a reimbursement piece? I'm just trying to figure out when, when this body might have a bite at the apple to ask those questions. Well, generally, if we're, if we're replacing or uh, renovating a, a building with MSBA funds, it would it would become a tempered building. Yeah, so it, it would come before us and we could talk about it. But uh, yes. are there any any res, res, uh, renovations that don't come before us where that consideration is made? Not that I'm okay. aware of. So it would have to be through MSBA. Got it. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Hughley. Thank you. Um, to Mr. Gutter's point, um, could we get a, get this information all in one sheet? Just like the name of the school, if it has tempered, if it has air conditioning, and what areas it has it as. That way we can look at it in on a paper form or electric form, and just so we can see what we're looking at all at once instead of discussing it back and forth. It'd probably be beneficial if we had it in front of us when we we're having the conversation. Maybe this is something we can bring up at the facilities meeting to talk about this in full and a, a future facilities meeting. Um, speaking of facilities meeting, um, on our facility security um, meeting. We have um, water testing results and repair, and we had a um, meeting to monitor and to schedule fixture repairs or replacements. You had mentioned that we had done quite a bit of replacements and fixtures. Is this, would you say this um, has been succeeded or accomplished this already, or should we keep this on our, on our subcommittee to still be reviewed? Um, certainly everything relative to the water bubblers is complete. If there are other areas, uh, I'm not aware of them. So I'll have to run that by Paul. Okay, thank you. Uh, sure. This is Lebo. Yes, yeah, so I just want to um, say a few things. First of all, uh, I hope this is gonna be posted on the website someplace because mm -hmm. what Mr. Scott gave us is just a tiny picture of the work that we see before us in this mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of it is stuff right off the school improvement plans that I remember. And I understand that sometimes emergency comes up and other stuff takes the place. But I also want to say to Mr. Gutro and Mr. Santoro's point, it's very difficult for school committees to make decisions and administration to make decisions about what they did, had to do at Quincy High School. But I would have been furious as a school committee member if they had to get rid of four vocational programs. The MSB gives you a dollar amount of reimbursement. And you build your school based on that. And as things come up and costs get more, there's no, there's no way to get the money from anybody else. So that was a very, very difficult decision. I'm grateful for the decision. And I do want to say that one of the good things about uh, this department is that they make sure that every classroom that is on the sunny side is getting shades now. And the renovations that you've done into all of our other schools make sure that we have windows that open and close, which we did not used to have, and shades to prevent, sunshine, to prevent the sun from coming in. I don't think too many of our families live in air-conditioned units, so I don't think the kids really are that impacted. I mean, it's just like a freezing day or a hot day. And I, I agree that the climate is changing and we're going to have more hot days, but I think that we've done a great job of mitigating that uh, in this. And even though I love every single thing in this, I just really want to say thank you about the carpets, the 30-year-old carpets being removed from North Quincy High School. 
<laughs> in like 15 classrooms and the nurse's <clears throat> office are 30 year old carpets. Uh, and that's been on the school improvement plan for a while. So I'm thrilled to see that that was completed. I know it wasn't the, one of the biggest priorities, but I just want to thank your department and please post this yes. so that people mm -hmm. can see the incredible list of work that this department, and to Mr. Santoro's point, mm -hmm. years ago, when I was working for the district, this would have come out of our budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything we did would have come out of our budget. And this has moved to the city side along with the park department, and nothing could have been better for us because we did not have the manpower uh, or the money. And whenever we had to make a decision then, Mr. Gatra, whenever we had to make a decision then, we canceled all of the improvements and stayed with the education. So mm -hmm. we, would, we would stop improving everything just so we could maintain our staff. I didn't dispute that, did I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You did, I didn't say, I didn't have any objections about everything moving over to the city side. No, I'm just saying that before that, we would have had to make all those, those cuts. We just, we, we didn't do any renovations. We couldn't because it was either teachers or renovations. Mm -hmm. And now it's just amazing that place. this happened. Yeah. So I just, I, I'm thrilled. It was one of the best decisions we ever made. Mm -hmm. This is Cahill. I just want to say, I think this list is an incredible amount of work to see what you've done in a year. Um, if anyone has any kind of experience with construction or, or any kind of building maintenance, then you see what's done here is a lot. The only, the only thing I would be, I'd like to see and, and, and confirm is that school improvement plan, you know, the building department, public buildings, you have your list of um, things that you think need to be done to buildings, but that we're also taking into consideration all the school improvement plans that the principals bring forward. And, um, you know, how do you, like, do, do you have a team, your team gets together and kind of goes through all the lists of all the things that we have that we want to see improved? And then how do you kind of determine which ones we're going to hit first and, and um, put in place? I think Usually that, it, runs, thing. It, it runs in through Commissioner Hines, and then he'll uh, approach the team, various members of the team, and, um, and talk about school improvement areas um, in each in each building, so we attempt to address all the school improvement uh, wants and needs. Requests. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we have to prioritize things like if a boiler plant is failing, you know, we have to go after that, um, and we go after uh, safety issues first. Um, it, you know, and then if we if we can, then we get to the rest of them. If they're just wants, they'll be lower on the list from the needs. But mm -hmm. the the hope is that we get through the wants requests. as well. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think you did. You've done an amazing job, to be honest with you. And I know that we can't do everything because we need the resources and the manpower and the construction teams and everybody to be able to do the work. And um, I think you've done a great job. So I thank you. Thank the department for the work you're doing. Yep. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Santoro. And I have to echo what Mrs. Lebo and all the other members of the committee uh, have stated tonight with regard to the decision to uh, separate the maintenance department from the school department. It really has made an amazing difference with regard to the quality of our buildings. But in particular, you, Mr. Scott and Mr. Hines, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, again, your responsiveness is, um, is fantastic on any issue that comes up. Um, through the help desk and then a direct call to you or to Mr. Hines, everything is dealt with immediately. Um, and this goes particularly during the COVID years. I mean, without you and your team, we would not have been able to operate. And so um, that that's a huge thanks. But I also do want to just highlight a couple of projects. The Broadmeadows Auditorium is become it's just it's looking fantastic so yes. and, and just that kind of exemplifies what the maintenance <laughs> department does so when work was going on broad meadows you know there could have been just a coat of paint and maybe some new seats no that's not how the city of quincy maintenance department works under you and mr hines um, it was determined that the entire facility needed a complete renovation not just a coat of paint and some new chairs and that's exactly what we got so now we have a state-of-the-art facility. It may have taken a little longer, cost it a little more, um, but we have a state-of-the-art facility that will last for 50 or more years, maybe 100 years, hopefully. Um, but again, that's just one example of the work that you and Mr. Hines and the entire team puts in in Quincy. It's just not you know, a glossing. You do the work and you, 
you do it right down to the very last nut and bolt, and we really appreciate that in all of the efforts. The other issue is that I want to highlight tonight is the uh, MSBA uh, project um, projects at Parker, Wallace, and Montclair. We were advised that we probably mm, probably shouldn't bother applying because we just got squandered from the MSBA, and they most likely won't give us any funding. But based on your guidance, Mr. Hines' guidance, and the mayor's guidance, now let's apply for it anyway and see what we get. Hmm. And we got them, uh, which is great. So we're going to be getting a boiler, a new boiler at Parker, and two a roof at Wallace and a roof at Montclair. So these are the advocacy pieces, too, that your department does to benefit the school department. Again, just a couple of examples. And, of course, this very large report will be posted online so everyone can see what was done over the summer to make our buildings beautiful, safe, and comfortable for our students and families. So um, on behalf of myself and the SLT, thank you for everything you do, Mr. Hines does, and the entire maintenance department for the Quincy Public Schools. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Thank you. On another note, just to remind people that uh, Mr. Scott, Mr. Hines, and the maintenance company all have to take care of all the other city, city buildings as mm -hmm. well. It's yeah, not just true. us. Mm -hmm. They're responsible for all those other buildings, the police, the fire, et cetera. So again, thank you, uh, Mr. Scott, <coughs> for your knowledge and also for the proactive approach that uh, the maintenance department has taken instead of a reactive one. So thank you again for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're moving to item uh, D, the appointment of a delegate for the MASC convention. Mrs. Hubley. Okay, I will be attending the Massachusetts Association of School Committees conference on November 2nd through 5th. And um, with the approval of school committee, I would like to be the delegate once again um, to vote on behalf of the Quincy Public Schools um, School Committee uh, when we get our resolutions, which we should be getting in the next couple of weeks. Mrs. Lebo. I'd like to make a motion to have Mrs. Hubley represent us as the, on the, on the second. committee. Second. Seconded by Mr. Gutro. You sure there's nobody else that's interested? <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Superintendent. Mr. Bagoli. Mrs. Cahill. Yes. Mr. Gutro. Yes. Mrs. Hubley. Yes. Mrs. Lebo. Yes. Mrs. Santoro. Yes. And Mayor Thank you. O okay. We thank have. You. Okay. Thank you. Item E, school bus transportation fee for review for uh, referral to the budget and finance subcommittee. Mr. Gatro, any comments? Uh, no comments. Okay. Is, is this um, just referral to the, the subcommittee? You're talking about the one that I introduced. Yes. Um, no, we can talk about it in the subcommittee. Okay. Thank you. So, so would be. Let's go down to item F, overnight travel. Um, the North Quincy High School Air Force ROTC is taking a trip to Cape Cod for their leadership camp to Camp Edwards on Otis Air Force Base. Motion to approve. Motion of Mrs. Hubley, seconded by Mrs. Cahill. We approve. Voice vote. Roll call. Uh, voice vote. Mr. Voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, any additional business by superintendent or uh, committee members? No additional. Seeing none. Communications. Uh, proposed subcommittee meeting calendar September through December. Any comments or... Uh, Mrs. Owens. Uh, yes, the policy subcommittee meeting um, has been moved from Wednesday to Thursday next week. I hope that works for people. Several people said they had a conflict on Wednesday. So it's now scheduled for um, Thursday the 22nd, 6 o'clock. That was the policy? The policy mm -hmm. subcommittee. Okay. 6? Six? 6 p.m. So let me know if you have a conflict with that, and we'll look for another date. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, Mrs. Santoro. Yes, Mrs. I just, Lebo. I have a question. If, if I want to see certain items on these early subcommittee mm -hmm. meetings, how do I get that information to you that it gets pulled off and put in? You can you can give you can just call me and we can okay. we can shift things around. This is just these were my Yeah, thoughts. I just want to, there's some things that I that we have pressing that I just like to see show up sooner rather than later. Yes, and we will probably need to do, have a policy meeting each okay. month, I think, to kind of cover the number of items that there are okay. in subcommittee. Yes. Thank you. I'm good. Okay. Reports of subcommittee. We have none. There is no executive session planned for this evening. And uh, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So I have it on the 27th. Yes, I had moved the calendar. So